Hello, all of you bold, beautiful, brilliant, and highly evolved souls. I'm Davina, and today's topic is people pleasing and setting boundaries. And this a kind of a little bit of a continuation of the video I just did on forced self abandonment. So when we grow up in a in a narcissistic home, we are forced to abandon ourselves and our boundaries. We learn very quickly that that uh, expressing our feelings or our needs and, and trying to set a boundary in whatever way we do as children, usually by usually by crying because that we don't know how to do it any other way. Um, we learn that it's dangerous. We learn that it is not safe here to express my true self, my true feelings, and my true needs, that it's not okay for me to have boundaries, that boundaries are not allowed, at least not for the, not for the children. Um, the parents are definitely allowed to have boundaries. They set all sorts of rules um, and a lot of unspoken rules that, that you have to follow. Um, but you as a child are probably allowed very few um, boundaries. And um, likely anything that is of inconvenience to the narcissist, um, yeah, will just be, um, yeah, you will be, yeah, shamed, ridiculed, um, yeah, made fun of, uh, just dismissed, ignored, given the silent treatment if you try to set a boundary. Um, because, yeah, they know that they're not capable of following that boundary, of respecting that boundary, because their abilities are so limited. Um, so, of course, the blame goes on to you. Um, you're the bad one. You're the wrong one. Um, and your boundaries don't matter. Because really, they are the, you know, they are the limited um, in their capacity for care. So um, a few emotions that often come up with us when we're trying to set a boundary are shame, um, terror, and guilt. Um, the shame might just be just something that's always kind of present, even as, you know, as we're adults and we're trying to go out in the world and try to start to set boundaries. And we might just have a sense of shame. I know I do. Um, I feel ashamed because I'm thinking I'm not worthy of having boundaries um, and protecting myself. This is sort of a belief that's very ingrained, like I can't set a boundary. You know, that's that's not OK for me. That's dangerous. That's wrong. That's bad. Um, I'm not worthwhile enough to have boundaries. I'm just supposed to people please everybody. Um, so, you know, starting out setting boundaries, it's it's just um it's, it's a hard thing to do. And, um, you know, it gets a little easier, but I don't know. I'm still find it difficult. I, I still need to go over things often many, many times to like convince myself that it's okay to do this. And, um, yeah. So another thing I want to bring up to do is like not to try not to anyway, to shame this process of, of boundary setting that it's that just remind yourself that of course, of course, I'm struggling setting with boundaries. Of course, I'm going over this a million times in my head. Of course, it's a mental wrangling that I have to go through just to set even maybe a simple boundary. Um, so be be gentle with this process. And um, yeah, of course, you you're you're having trouble setting boundaries. Your parents didn't allow you to have boundaries. You have probably had no you have no practice up until now. So. It takes practice. Um, the second uh, feeling that I mentioned is um, terror. And I know that I often feel, um, especially with the employers that I've had, um, I work as a nanny, so they're also parents. They're parents and they're my perceived authority figures. And so I feel, I have felt terror in, in the beginning, really. I just um, felt a deep sense of terror when I went to speak up a boundary. Um, I remember doing one with um, the, the father was constantly being late um, at the end of the day and not even saying anything, not mentioning, not saying, excuse me, Davina, can you stay an extra five minutes or whatever? Um, he would just go about his thing. And one day he was like taking out the recycling at like seven minutes after five. And I was supposed to go home at five and he didn't say anything. And I'm just like, OK, that's it. Right. And um, 
but I felt terror, like in speaking to him and saying, you know, um, <laughs> uh, this, you know, when you are late, I feel, um, I'm feeling ashamed. This is triggering for me. Could you please be on time? And um, it took a while. I had to say it a few times before um, he started really, you know, listening to that. Um, so, you know, often in, in my mind, it's like, what will they think of me? Will they ridicule me? Will I be shamed? Will I be rejected? You know, and in this case, will I be fired from my job for trying to set a healthy boundary? You know, it's a healthy boundary. Um, I think, you know, being on time, it's just general courtesy and respect for everyone. You know, it's a healthy thing. Um, it's, it's no good if he learns that he can constantly be late. That's that's not good, right? That's not, I think, godly is what I like to think of it, if, if it's a godly boundary, you know. Um, and the third feeling is guilt. And this often can come up after you set the boundary or possibly even before this sense of like uh, similar to shame, but like this deep sense of like, I'm doing something really bad, really wrong. This is not, this is not okay for me to do this. I shouldn't be doing this. Um, and again, that comes from, of course, you know, being raised by a narcissist. Um, and so um, the one I'm facing right now is um, wearing a mask at my job when um the child is sick or when i think they may have contracted something and um so um you know what i'm feeling i'm feeling guilty i'm thinking well if i wear the mask i'm being a bad nanny this is wrong and the little girl won't be able to see my entire face um but i reminded myself that you know that really that if I'm not wearing the mask, I'm not loving this little girl. I'm just feeling sorry for her, really. It's just pity if we don't set the boundary. Then it's not love at all. It's just um, I'm more concerned with her than I am with myself. And of course, I have to balance these sometimes, you know, but I have to think, well, what's, you know, what is she going to miss out on or what could possibly happen to me if I don't set this boundary? So um, it's not always cut and dry. But um, anyway, these are the feelings that can come up around boundaries, a lot of shame, a lot of terror, and a lot of guilt. And, um, you know, it, it again, it just takes time and practice to work through these. And sometimes just sitting with that terror, sitting with that guilt and thinking, oh, this feels horrible because this it feels so, so against what our conditioning is. So it's feel, it might, I don't know, I used to feel like I'm like, like trying to break down a wall or something when I set boundaries sometimes. It's like, it can feel really hard to like um, make that hurdle and like kind of get over that wall to the other side. Um, so just yeah, a lot of a lot of patience and uh, and perseverance as well. Just keep trying and just you know give yourself that little nudge. You know you don't don't try to do some grand boundary if you're just starting out. So just little nudges, little nudges as you go. Um, and um, those are my tips on um, people pleasing and and boundaries because it, you know, yeah, we're not loving anyone if we're just people pleasing if we don't have those boundaries in place for ourselves. So know that it is healthy for everyone involved for you to have boundaries. Okay, um, thank you again for listening, and I am wishing you many blessings on your journey of healing and awakening. And I'm Davina at Boldness Blooming.